Hi there, Chloe here. Before we get into the episode, I want to tell you about how you can win yourself a £50 Amazon voucher or dollars or euros or whatever the currency is on your local Amazon platform. Just fill in my podcast listeners survey at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash survey. It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you solve your marketing problems and grow your e-commerce business. Cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and advice from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello and welcome to our latest podcast. I'm Chloe and it's great to have you out there listening. Today we're diving into the world of B2B e-commerce. So selling to other businesses via e-commerce channels rather than selling to consumers. I know we have a fair few of you B2B bods out there listening, so I hope you find today's episode useful. There's also going to be plenty for those of you not currently wholesaling to learn as well. It's always good to hear what's happening in other parts of the industry. Without the sponsors, the podcast wouldn't be possible, so please do check them out. This episode is brought to you by SendPro Online from Pitney Bowes. SendPro Online makes it easy to save time and money, no matter what you send or ship, and you'll always get the best rates and never overpay. With SendPro, you can compare shipping rates between carriers, plus save five cents a letter and up to 40% off USPS priority mail shipping. As a listener, you can get a free 30-day trial and a free £10 scale, but only when you visit pb.com forward slash masterplan. That's pb dot com forward slash master plan. Let me introduce you to today's special guest. Justin King is a specialist in B2B e-commerce. He is the president of B2X Partners and has recently distilled his experience of building that digital branch into B2B businesses into a book called Digital Branch Secrets e-commerce playbook for distributors. It's available on Amazon globally in Kindle and audio format and also available if you're in the USA as a paperback. Hello, Justin. Hello. Very excited to be here and especially to talk about this, my favorite topic, which is B2B e-commerce and customer experience. I really appreciate you having me. It's great to have you here. I do like to have an author on every now and again. And, um, and as the listeners know, I have a, there's a special place in my heart for B2B. So it's kind of cool to be allowed to speak about it for a whole episode too. So um, I've given the listeners a kind of a quick overview about what you're up to. But how did you get involved in e-commerce in the first place? Let's start there. Yeah, I, I, it's pretty fascinating, actually. So um, I mean, I've been in, probably involved in e-commerce, you know, since I graduated from school in 1997 and saw the internet. Um, but this intersection of B2B and e-commerce, uh, is particularly interesting. Um, really, I, I, I wanted, um, it was probably back in 2007, 2008. Uh, I, I had this, uh, I had a desire for speaking. Um, uh, and I wanted to be a speaker and a thought leader. And I reverse engineered, uh, what the kind of the leading speakers were doing, the guys that I really followed. Um, and I realized they had a blog. And they became a thought leader and became an expert at something. And I looked at my life and said, man, you're really not an expert on anything right now. Um, you have this interesting kind of ERP supply chain background and, a, and an e-commerce background. Um, how do those intersect? And as I started exploring, I realized that nobody out there was talking back at that time in 2007 about this intersection of e-commerce and the B2B business. And by B2B, really what I mean by primarily that means manufacturers and distributors, right? There's lots of other types of B2B companies, um, but that the manufacturers and distributors especially. So I started a blog and I started a blog called e-commerce and B2B.com. Um, and I was uh, actually working um, in my agency um, that I had helped uh, kind of build and we had a small B2B uh, practice, but we weren't doing a lot of e-commerce. We were doing a lot of e-commerce on the retail side, but on the B2B side. And I started writing about my point of view on this whole topic. And for five years, nobody came to my little blog. <laughs> wow, that's commitment. <laughs> I mean, so I wrote every morning from 5.30 to 7 in the morning. Um, and nobody came. I mean, I, I'm exaggerating. Like my mom came and my dad, <laughs> I mean, it's really, it's, it's a, it's very disappointing when you're like looking at your analytics and you're like, 
oh, I had seven people on my website yesterday. And then you look at the locations and they're all from Akron, Ohio, where my parents are from. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I wrote for five years and, and no, no one really came. And then uh, I was part of a, a large uh, distributor uh, launch for Granger um, here in the U.S. And uh, all the distributors and manufacturers woke up at the same time. And my site then just became flooded um, with people looking for the topic of B2B e-commerce and um, by that point, I had a large point of view. I had been helping a few, you know, small distributors and manufacturers, a small group of distributors and manufacturers do e-commerce. And I just fell in love with it um, and really has been my career ever since um, that's that time in 2007. Kind of interesting to think about, though. Um, someone Someone recently said, you know, it feels like you just popped out of nowhere. Like you're, it's, it feels like an overnight success since we've only had the company for a little while. And I was like, well, it took me eight years to become an overnight success, right? So often the case, isn't it? <laughs> so often. So a very strategic decision to get into the world of B2B e-commerce. And then then clearly you've uh, you, you put the legwork in for those first five odd years with the blog to get to where you are today. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and blogging is interesting because it, it helped me create a point of view, right? It helped me think through the challenges um, and, and think through them completely, right? Not just kind of high level challenges, but actually think through them and then go back and look at them and say, okay, how, how, do, those, how do those things I wrote back then still stand up today? Um, back in 2008, I wrote, you know, the biggest difference between B2B and B2C, which is an interesting difference. And there are huge differences between B2B and B2C. Mm-hmm. And I wrote back then that, that the biggest difference is that in B2B, the people that you're selling to, you're, you're selling to to help them do their job easier. Um, they're, they're not shopping for shoes, right? They're not, they're not pleasure shopping. They're there to do their job. And so e-commerce then is about helping them do their job. Well, if you're helping them do their job, that completely changes everything around your strategy, right? It may change your user experience because you're not not really trying to draw people in. You're trying to help them do their job. So it might be more about utility rather than creating sexy and cool sites. Um, And it changes everything. And so I wrote that that back in 2008 and it still stands true today. It still remains the largest difference and a, and a core difference between, between these two different practices. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of core differences between B2B and B2C. Do you want to give us a couple of those other core differences as you see them? Yeah. Um, so, so first of all, it's about their job. So the, the, the customer is different. Um, the next thing is that in B2B, I mean, we, we just have... A com- we have a complexity in B2B that doesn't exist in B2C. So we have complex customers. So working with an organization, selling to a company is different than selling to an individual. That, that company is complex. That, that company has complex ordering processes. And frankly, sometimes it's mandated um, complex ordering processes. Like, um, like we, have to have, um, we have to have this type of checkout process. Um, in place. And so you, how do you deal with that? You say you end up building separate checkouts for every single one of your customers or are you doing workflow? I mean, the complexity, right? Um, we have complex products. So in B2B, I mean, most of our customers have tens of thousands of products, if not hundreds or even millions of products. I have a customer with eight and a half million products um, that they sell. And those products, the those products themselves are complex. They have complex attributes, right? It's not just about 15, I don't know, 5, 10 attributes like you might have in B2C. We're talking about sometimes 30, 40, 50, 60 attributes per product, um, which makes search and navigation and actually finding that product a lot more difficult. The products themselves are, are can be complex and even expensive, right? So you could be selling something that's worth $10,000 or $100,000. We recently had a customer um, that that sold a hundred thousand dollar product on their website. Wow, that that blows the mind, doesn't it? <laughs> 
Well, that's right. And if you're selling a hundred thousand dollar product, by the way, look, imagine your average order. Value. Yeah, <laughs> there's a bit of a spike there. <laughs> <laughs> Quite like our average order value went from a thousand dollars to sixty thousand. How did that happen? And why is our payment gateway annoyed with us right now? But when you sell a complex product like that, I mean, so it doesn't have to be exaggerated as a hundred thousand dollars. But imagine selling a five thousand dollar product or a ten thousand dollar product, right? Um, the, the amount of decision making that goes into, is this the right product that I want to buy? Right. I'm looking at a product detail page. Is this the right product? And how do I determine that it's the right product? And the amount of product information that has to be displayed on a product detail page goes well beyond the description, a couple attributes and a couple images, right? It may have, um, specs. It may have CAD files attached to it. it. May have a whole bill of materials of other products that attach to that product. Um, I mean, the, just the complex products. And then the, the last, the last big difference is the complex system. So in the B two B world, what typically runs a B two B company is their ERP. It's not some retail POS system. It's an ERP. That ERP is the lifeblood of that organization. That means that the, the e-commerce site has to be integrated with that ERP because the ERP contains this customer is allowed to buy these products at this price, right? And, and includes all the terms and conditions. The relationship between a, a company and another company is typically determined by the contract, the terms and conditions between those companies. That means the e-commerce um, experience has to reflect those terms and conditions in that relationship, right? Um, and it has to be consistent. So the, just the, the complexity of customer product and systems um, by itself is just makes the B2B e-commerce experience and the technology that runs it and the amount of integration and the type of experience that you build on top of it extremely complex. Just before we move on to my next question, Justin, could you um, just just tell people what ERP stands for and what POS stands for? Because I'm sure a few of them are just going, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Absolutely. So, so POS is point of sale system. So you think of it as the cash register for most retail companies. Um, B2B companies a lot of times don't have a POS. That's, that's not what runs their company. What runs them is what's called an ERP, an enterprise resource planning. It, 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 it contains all the information about their supply chain. It contains, Hey, we've got this amount of inventory on our, in our shelves. Um, we have this amount of inventory coming in from our suppliers. We've got this amount of inventory that's already promised to these customers. Um, we've, you know, so it truly manages their entire business. Most, Distributors and most manufacturers, their entire lifeblood of their company, everything revolves around this enterprise resource planning system, ERP, um, as it's uh, commonly called. Excellent explanation. Thank you very much for those two. Okay, so at the heart of your book is the X e commerce system or XES, which, you know, the second I saw it, I feel a little bit in love with it because right there in the middle is the word customers, which, you know, quite frankly, any model has to have them at the middle, um, has to have them in the heart. So do you just want to tell the audience a little bit about that X e-commerce system? Yeah, I mean, I just to give a quick story. So I, I was I was watching this, how it came all about. I was watching a, a travel channel. Um and here in the U.S., there's a travel channel and a, there's a competition where two people have to eat something giant, right? Um, and this, in this case, it was a giant hamburger. And there was this really big guy. He was like 6'6", 275 pounds, just stack guy. And there's this smaller guy. And looking at the two of them, it's like, who's going to eat it? The big guy's going to eat it, right? No problem. But the little guy, the smaller guy, cuts up the hamburger into these small little pieces while the big guy's just tearing into his hamburger, right? So it's painful for television to watch this. Um, but at the end of this show... The, the, the smaller guy finishes the hamburger and the bigger guy gets only two thirds of the way through. And they talk to the guy afterwards. They say, well, like, how did you do that? And in fact, you did something very intentional. You kept, you would never look down at the hamburger. You just kept picking up the pieces and looking at the pieces and eating. And he said, listen, I knew that if I cut up the hamburger and I took, and I took every piece and just looked at it and said, Oh, I can finish this piece and eat it. I can finish this little piece and eat it. Versus looking at about how much I had left um, that I could do it. And it started a quest for me to, to cut up the hamburger when it comes to distributors and manufacturers. We have this giant problem 
um, with all these moving parts, we do have this complexity. Um, we're, we're, these are not typically digital companies, right? They don't know what they don't know. Um, in fact, that's a core premise within the book. Um, so how, how do they take a big problem and break it down into small bite-sized chunks? And it started a quest for me and we've take, we took all of the best practices that we had worked on. And, you know, I'm, you know, relatively, at least here in the U.S., considered one of the leading thought leaders in this area. So I have some point of view. Um, we reverse engineered what the largest distributors and manufacturers were doing. And we created the X e-commerce system as a system or a framework. And that, no, it's a sole purpose of it isn't to say that this is your system and framework. It's to say, hey, this is a reasonable way for us to break down this large problem of e-commerce um, into small bite-sized chunks so that we can cut the hamburger and finish it, right? But over a period of time. And it's a, it's a relatively low resolution look at it, right? If you, if you increase the resolution and go to high resolution, every one of these pieces then becomes its own set of pieces, right? Um, but from a low resolution perspective, which many executives need. So this book was written for executives, um, not to the e-commerce people, right? So an e-commerce person would look at it and say, well, this is relatively common sense and kind of generic, but for the executive, it's written to them. It speaks to them and, um, in a way that helps them actually understand what all the components of this look like and in some way of kind of breaking this all down. So I suppose that kind of makes it the perfect book to give your boss if you're trying to persuade him to launch that digital branch to the wholesale or distributor business. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's the perfect book, but it's, it's, it's certainly the best book out there today to um, help them understand it, right? I mean, I, I literally had individuals in mind as I wrote this. I had the CEO, I had the CFO, I had the CIO in mind. Literally, they're, they're, I had their um, faces plastered here um, as I wrote this book. So it was written for them. And I, I think it's at least for, for today, the, the best way of communicating, especially for distributors. I mean, the, the word digital branch, uh, at least here in the U.S., is um, the word digital branch. Uh, the, a branch is a location for a distributor. They call their locations branches. They don't call them stores, right? Um, and so digital branch immediately creates this, you know, kind of word picture in their mind of, okay, I, 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 I kind of understand what a digital branch is because I understand what a physical branch is. I don't think we call it that in this. Would we call it that in this country? I'm not sure, but it makes perfect sense. There, there are there are distributors in the UK that call themselves that they call their locations branches, um, but but I don't think it's as prevalent as as it is here. Yeah, it's kind of intertwined with shop front or service desk or the service desk, order desk. Um, yeah, and then once um, in the book, once someone's understood the X e-commerce system and then they work their way through each of the different parts of it. You then make a really interesting point when we get to chapter 10 uh, about the five phases of XES maturity, which I thought was a really interesting way of kind of looking back on the process you've just taken people from. So you just want to tell us a little about those five phases as well, please? Yeah. I mean, I think, I think, you know, the, the X e-commerce system is a good way of kind of, th- these are all the components that are needed, but it doesn't talk really to Okay, like if I'm here, what do I do with the XCS, right? Um, and so, so describing a maturity model that, that helps a company first determine where are we at, right? Where are we at in the maturity model? And then to be able to say, okay, if we're here in the maturity model, here's how the XCX flexes. So, so for example, there's a, there's a part in analytics. Um, ec- analytics is a part of the X e-commerce system. Well, analytics, when you don't have an e-commerce platform, makes no sense, right? Like there's, there's the, the, the only thing we're going to say is set up analytics and here are the basics for analytics that go beyond kind of page views, right? Here are the general KPIs you should look at. If you're, if you're transitioning, um, from getting your customers to adopt and use the site to, um, acquiring new customers. Well, analytics and the optimization that you want to do to do that, analytics plays a very, very big part, right? And so the X e-commerce system has to kind of flex um, and, and parts of it become more important depending on where you're at in the maturity model. So we, we talk about kind of five stages. Um, foundation is that, right? Build the foundation so that you can mature, right? Um, but most companies that we deal with, honestly, you know, I think most companies in the world that are in B2B are in that foundational stage. And you can also, you could also categorize that as zero to 10% of your revenue coming through online. 
That's another way of looking at that. Then we look at customer adoption. Um, from foundation, now we want to get our current customers actually using this site, right? Often, this is a tool to help our current customer base. It's not to acquire new customers necessarily. It's to help our current customers. And then stage three is about repositioning so that we're not just doing customer adoption and for our existing customers, but it's also a growth engine, an accelerant inside of our business where we're allowing e-commerce like we do in the retail world to double our business, right? We don't want, we don't just want 20% of our revenue coming online. We want e-commerce and digital to double our entire business. Um, and to do that, we have to reposition ourselves to move into an acquisition stage um, and then the last uh, stage is innovation. And, fr- and frankly, there's not a lot of information about innovation in the book um, because we haven't found many or very good examples of what innovation looks like in the B2B world today. Oh, so there's plenty of scope for people to uh, to reach that point of perfection then. Lots. I mean, I think I think we could categorize, uh, safely categorize, you know, a large percentage um, of companies over 50% certainly that are in the, just those first two stages of foundational and customer adoption, which is very different than the retail world, right? Um, where, where many companies are able to do things uniquely and, and they embrace it and they've been doing digital e-commerce for five to 10 years. It's just not the case in distributors and manufacturers. E-commerce master plan is supported by some of the greatest companies in the e-commerce sector. Here's a reminder of who they are. Shipping is complex. Now there's a better way to manage it all. Send Pro Online by Pitney Bowes. Easily compare USPS and other shipping options, print labels and stamps on your own printer, track all shipments. Plus, despite the USPS post rates increase in January, you'll still get great discounts on USPS priority mail shipping and get five cents off every letter you send. Sempro Online is only $14.99 per month. You can get a free 30-day trial when you visit pb.com forward slash masterplan plus a free £10 scale. That's pb.com slash masterplan. It's time for the top tips round. Okay, well, guys, I think it's time we head into the top tips round. And I love this section because it gives me and our listeners some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. Okay, Justin, the first up is the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? Oh, um, just for e-commerce? E-commerce and business. E-commerce and business. So I, I, I'm reading... Um, I'm reading The Advantage by pa- Patrick Lencioni. Lencioni, sorry. Um, and I, I mean, I am, I am so thrilled by it. Um, my, that's my current, that's my current favorite book right now, The Advantage by Patrick Lencioni. Excellent. Okay. The traffic top tip then. Which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? Ah, you know, tra- traffic. Traffic in the B2B world isn't as important as it in the B2C world. Um, in the B2B world, the, the thing that doesn't get the most traction is, is actually getting our internal people to actually believe that e-commerce is a good thing for them. It's a little crazy, but like, that's my biggest tip is actually get your internal, like have evangelists, like forget about marketing to your customers, market internally until you have adoption and evangelism inside of your company. If you get that, it'll evangelize to your customers, right? Get your sales teams behind this, align your compensation with your, with your sales team so that they're compensated on, on e-commerce and that they'll evangelize it. If you do that, that'll, that will drive more traffic um, to your site than any kind of tactic that you can use. Such a good piece of advice. Okay. And, and resonates a lot, I think, for a lot of people in the consumer e-commerce world too, when you've got shop staff and maybe you're, you're launching online for the first time. Okay, then the tool top tip, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plug in a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? You know, Slack, Slack is probably our best tool that we use. Um, we, we as a company, you know, we're very distributed, so we don't have anybody in a single office. Um, it's, you know, it's me and my assistant here and the other 15 people are spread out. Slack is, is the tool that, that we cannot live without. 
Um, a cool tool that maybe people haven't heard of though is Vox or Voxer. Um, it's a way to send kind of voice messages back and forth. And we use, we use Vox. I use Voxer all the time to, um, communicate. Maybe, uh, we did the whole book over Voxer. I dictated the chapters of the book and my VP of marketing wrote it. And then we, then our editor. So, um, Voxer is my favorite. Very cool. I'll have to check that one out. And then the growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business, B2B or B2C, from 100 orders per month to 1,000 orders per month, what would be your number one tip for them? You can't, you can't do it like that. You, you can't do it with those basics. You have to break the problem down. Um, meaning to go from 100 to 1,000, um, you have to know all the levers you need to pull. Um, so in the B2B world, it's about I have to get someone registered. That means I have to increase registrations. That means I have to increase people using the site. I have to increase first orders. I have to increase second orders. Um, there's, there's levers, there's levers that need to be pulled. You uh, break that problem down into smaller pieces of this leads to this leads to this leads to this and then brainstorm each one of those separately. If reg, if in the B2B world, if, to get an order, you have to have someone registered. That means you have to be able to increase registrations. And so you can just deal with that problem. Like, how do we get more customers to register? That's an easy problem. That's a lot easier of a problem than to say, how do we go from 100 to 1,000? Um, then you say, how do we get people that are registered to just start using this site? Well, we could probably brainstorm a 1,000 ideas there. And, and so break the, break the problem down. Um, don't, otherwise, they become tactics um, instead of levers. Excellent advice yet again. Well, Masterplan World, you can find those top tips and links to everything else we've been chatting about in today's episode by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast, where you will see a link to this show. Justin, before we say goodbye, could you let the listeners know where they can find you, your book and your business on the web and social media, please? Yeah, so b2xpartners.com is uh, the the main site and all of our information is there. We've actually merged our e-commerce and B2B blog into that. Um, on LinkedIn is where I share most of my stuff. Of course, it's connected to Twitter, but LinkedIn. So follow me or connect with me. It's just Justin King. I think LinkedIn.com uh, forward slash in forward slash Justin King um, for my best. Um, the, but we do regular videos on LinkedIn um, on a regular basis. Excellent. And people can find, is Amazon the best place to go to get the book? Uh, DigitalBranchSecrets.com is the cheapest way to get the book. Oh, excellent. Even better. Okay, well, guys, um, we'll make sure links to all of that and everything else we've been talking about today is in the show notes. Masterplan World, you can find those at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast or head over to the website, click on the podcast tab or use the search box. Justin, thank you so much for being on the podcast today and telling us all about your book and sharing so many great tips with us too. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Excellent chat there to Justin about getting, kind of getting deep into that world of B2B e-commerce. Hopefully you've all thought and found some bits from there that will help you in your businesses. Certainly that idea of, uh, or the analogy of being the guy who ate the burger by cutting it up into little pieces. That's one that's going to resonate with me for a while, I, I think. And lots in there for those of you working on the B2B side of things, working for distributors and wholesalers. If you want even more than Justin's book, uh, Digital Branch Secrets, of course, there is my book about B2B, which is called B2B E-Commerce Master Plan, um, available in all formats on Amazon. And um, you can find out about all of my books at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash book. That's it for today's show. Uh, do feel free to come and join the discussion in our Facebook group, ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash Facebook. And whatever happens, have a great week and keep optimising. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce master plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com slash podcast.